there are no shortcuts in life. There is no substitute for hard work. But don't ever forget your family. It's really, really important. Suku came to the United States to go to Iowa State University in 1971. He's of Indian descent and was four generations from Uganda in East Africa. While he was at Iowa State, his family was evicted by the dictator Idi Amin and they fled to England uh, and left everything behind. When my brother found out that Suku was a man without a country, my brother suggested he spend the summer at our house so he could save money and finish college. You know, I started speaking English when I was 11. I didn't speak, we didn't speak English at home. The thought of spending the summer with an American family that I had never met uh, was a bit of a daunting thought. And when I arrived at their home, uh, there was a bit of a shock because it was the parents and their 16-year-old daughter who had 13 domestic pets. So, you know, first I thought I had arrived in a zoo. And, you know, the shock was, does every American family live like this? So that was my real opening to America, so to speak. I fell in love with his accent and his hair. <laughs> He seemed very worldly. I had never been on an airplane, and he came in and taught me how to play badminton. 18 months later, their 16-year-old daughter, who was now 18, traded 13 pets in for me, and we got married. I started with $4.87 to my name out of college. Because of my family's eviction, I rushed through college. And here, we're getting married, I'm just starting college, and you know, people look at us and think, oh, you have everything, but we started with nothing. My great-grandfather was a surgeon in southern Iowa, and he actually did the first successful cesarean section in the United States in 1893 and his microscope is over there on the wall. So I decided that that would be a good thing to do. And there was a physician shortage at that time. So Des Moines University, comms as it was known then, had a program to graduate physicians more quickly. I'm so proud of how far Des Moines University has come from the days when I was in the old St. Joseph's Academy. Uh, with the black garbage bags at the stained glass windows so that we could see the overhead projector. One reason I specialized in rheumatology is because it deals with mostly chronic illnesses and I would give a lot of hugs to my patients. Uh, many of them were alone and in life and uh, hopefully appreciated that and felt that I was helping them feel better. And my first 17 years in practice, I was the only one of my specialties. So the only time I was not on call was when I was in labor or out of the country. <laughs> so um, it was very busy and trying to be a mom. The, the, the real challenge was work-life balance. May was always very, very understanding, very patient. Somebody was introducing me at some event and said, he's the kind of person who would even go to the opening of a drawer. <laughs> I'm a very big believer in paying my civic rent. I started on the board shortly after President Angela Franklin came to the university and there has been such a transformation of the university as a whole, the engagement of the faculty and the students. It's the tone at the top and Angela has done an absolutely fabulous job with that. And when I saw the passion she had for the institution, my immediate reaction was, it would be great to be able to make a meaningful gift to help the Glanton Fund. There are several studies that indicate that patients' health outcomes are better if their health provider reflects themselves. So if they can relate better, trust better, there will be a better outcome. And that's why it's so important 
uh, we can teach diversity, but we need to provide diversity as well. When my family was evicted, I made a vow to myself that was very simple. All the things that my Iowa friends did for me, the faculty, my fellow students, etc., and then Mary's family, I, I, I feel like I owe everybody a lot. So I, I'm planning on being in Iowa for the rest of my life, despite the weather. <laughs> you are so spoiled. <laughs>